Hello friends, welcome to the first ever tutorial under my new name, On The Mark Get Set Go, here on this YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing how I do 3D lettering, which I put in almost all of my lettering pieces, um, which you can see here and here. Alright, to start off you need some sort of a sketch of a word. Um, I chose spooky because Halloween is coming and I love everything Halloween. Um, if you want tips on how to sketch better in Procreate, I have a whole other tutorial for that, so I'm not going to go over a lot of those um, things today. But we're going to start off with this letter, and you'll notice that I don't have this exactly centered on my artboard. It's a little bit up and a little bit to the side. That's because I want to make sure I have space to add my 3D once I copy and paste it down. First I want to do a block letter. I think that 3D letters look the best with block letters. So I'm going to make a new layer and start sketching these letters out to be more 3D. Alright, now that the word is all ready to go, we need to duplicate it. So I'm going to come over to my layers panel, duplicate, and I want to make sure I'm pulling down the second layer. So using my selection tool, I'm going to pull this down. So as you can see, I have two of the spookies. This is where you get to decide how much of an exaggerated, wow that is hard to say, um, exaggerated 3D effect you want. I'm going to do it about right there. And you can see how I'm getting really close to the edge over here. That's why I didn't spell my word out so that it hit both edges. Even still, I'm probably gonna have to move things around to make sure it's where I want it to be. All right, now we're going to recolor that layer. Make sure the little cursor is on the back layer. And I'm going to do that in an orange be a more of a burnt orange there we go so you can see the two words now I'm gonna zoom in here on the S so to create the 3d effect we're going to draw some lines from the first word to the second word and we're going to do all of this on the layer of the second word the underneath so I need to highlight this color if you just tap and hold on a color, it'll bring up a color wheel so you can select that color. And now I'm going to draw those lines from one point to its matching point on the under layer and color it in. This part's kind of fun because it feels a little bit like a coloring book. You just get to go along and color things in. The curves, you just want to try and match the curve. And see here there's nothing to link it, so I just need to color it in. Same with up here, connect that to that, color in the extra. This has nothing to link it, color it in. And this curve, just continue on. So now the S is done. And I'm gonna do the same thing, matching the points for all the rest of the letters. Now I have all of my letters filled in with that 3D look to them, but there's not very good definition where the creases fall on these letters. Shadows are what makes 3D so cool. Um, that's what gives it the pop. So we're going to add in those sh shadows to our letters. Let's go up to our layer panel again and above the orange for me, whatever color you did it, the underneath layer of spooky, I'm going to add a new layer on top of that. And then on my color wheel, I'm going to choose a color that's slightly darker than my original color um, so I can put in those shadows. Now back to the layers panel. I'm going to click on the orange spooky layer that I've already done, tap on that layer, and hit select. It's a little hard to see, but now there's this grayed out lines and that means that I can only draw where I've already drawn on this layer. 
And the cool thing about doing the select instead of the alpha lock is now with that selection still in place, if I go up to my new layer, when I draw on this new layer, I'll do something silly just so you can see, it applies to that layer, all those lines. And if I turn it off and on, it hasn't affected the bottom layer. So let's undo that. So I'm gonna hit select on the orange and then go up to my new layer. I forgot to mention that this whole time I've been using the My Favorite Pencil Brushes set that's available on my website. Um, that whole time I was using the Favorite Pencil. I use that for about 80% of my work. And then now we're going to use the 3D Shader. Go over here to the S and anywhere that there might be a crease or a plane that's different than the next one is where I'm going to start doing this shading effect. Make that a little bigger. I like this brush because it can go on in layers. So there I have the bottom of the S. Already you can tell that there's just a better definition on that curve. I'm also going to get up in here on the curve because it would probably also be in shadow if these letters were in real life. Same with the top of this curve. Then I'm going to go in with my eraser tool. My favorite eraser is the shaky eraser also in the pencil set. And I'm just going to sharpen those edges down. Oh, went a little too far. Use the snap to a straight line, and you can get a nice straight line on those edges. I go over the edges and then come back and erase them so that I don't have to be super precise. The shader brush, it's a little hard to get super precise on it, so it's easier to just come in later with the eraser. So I'm getting this little bend right there. So the harder I press, the more opaque it is, like here at the bottom of the S. The lighter I press, it's where I get this nice little grain up through here. Same with down here, press harder, press softer as I come around the curve to give it that nice gradient. All right, so that would be all I would probably do for the S. Now moving on to the P, I'm going to get this where I'm pressing, pressing harder because I don't really want a gradient on this. Same within the corner, but then I do want a gradient up through the curve. So I'm gonna press hard and get softer as I come up the curve. Get the corner in here and the corner up here and the curve up top. So I'm gonna hold that straight, snap to straight, and erase the excess. Same with this little area here, lining up that corner and that corner, and then erasing the excess. All right, P is done. On to the O. The O doesn't have any sharp points, so I'll just be curving the shading around the top and bottom curve. And then on the inside, just like I did on the P. And then I'll do the same thing for the next O. Okay, on the K, haha, going to do the same thing as in the other letters. Darken up these sections, get some darkness in there. Go on the bend and fade. And then I'll get in that little spot too. Then go in with the eraser and erase that out. So right here, I'm running into a problem where my erasing looks too harsh in the gradient over here. Uh, I want this to be a nice 
flat edge, but I don't really want this to be a flat edge. So I'll go into my eraser tool and use the 3D shader as an eraser instead. And make it a little bigger. And I will erase out that little spot so that it comes up to it more gradually. And you can't see that harsh edge anymore. You just have the harsh edge over here and then I'll switch back to the shaky eraser. And I'll finish up these little edges. Oh, a little too big. There's a bit of a crease right there, so I'm gonna just kind of pretend that I know the angle on it and erase. and get this nice straight edge here. Sometimes when I have big long sections without any texture, like right, oops, like right here and right here, I might add a little bit more coming up one of the edges but I want to clean it up first before adding that in. Now I'm pretty happy with all that shading, so I will unclick the select button, and my word is looking very nice. You can see how all of that added definition makes this look truly 3D now. Um, if you want to be a little bit more drastic, sometimes I don't choose a dark enough color for my gradients, and so I want to go in and change that color. If you go into the little magic wand tool and then the curves, it gives you this histogram. Well, it's not really a histogram, it gives you this line and you can make it darker or lighter based on where you pull it. Kind of like how this one looks really moody with the darker shading on it. And then I might even go in and lighten up the under color so I get a really drastic, spooky effect. So you can play with those settings until you're happy with it. Maybe that shading isn't quite what I want now, a little bit lighter. If I want to change the color of my top word, I can click on the top word, go that same little magic wand and hit recolor like we did for the bottom word. Then you go up to the color, choose your new color if I want it to be true black and that creates a little bit better contrast. So now it would be the time to add in some more decorative elements to your letters if you so desire. So you can add a layer on top of everything. If I go in with a white and go to my favorite pencil. Oh, didn't change, favorite pencil. I can go in and add some little elements like this into everything. Okay, now you have beautiful 3D letters. You can take this and you can apply it to scripts, you can apply it to line lettering, you can pretty much apply it to any sort of shape to create this 3D blocked effect. And we're done! Woohoo! <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that now you can feel confident creating your own gorgeous 3D lettering for your own lettering pieces. I'd love, love, love to see what you guys do with this tutorial. So if you want to tag me at On The Mark Designs on Instagram, I would love to look at and then share the pieces that you create. So make sure to do that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials just like this. See you next time.